everybody, Sarah here. So today we're going to go through the difference between Tessera combination with Motley and Stripe versus Motley and Stripe separately. So before we do, please remember to like and subscribe and share and all that fun stuff. Remember, I have a website, sarahsnakeshop.com. If you are interested in learning more about morphs, I wrote two corn snake morph books. They are for sale on that website right now. I also want to thank Reptilinks for helping to sponsor this channel. Uh, if you would like to check them out, you get $5 off by using my code, uh, it's sarahsnake27, or you can click the link in the description for it to automatically put it in. You get money off, I get a percentage, and they also have a $100 money back guarantee if you're not satisfied. And also I want to thank all of our wonderful members. I will list them over here. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel financially. Uh, we would not have everything that we have on this channel without you. So thank you so much. You have no idea how much I appreciate you. Uh, if anybody else would like to become a member, it's $2 a month. You can click join under any video. You get your own video every single week uh, as members. And then you also get access to live videos after those are over as well. So jumping right into the sort of base look for all of these mutations, a Tessera obviously is going to have the thin stripe that is the same color as the ground color going straight down the back. And that's important to remember. Remember, we have our ground color, our border color, and our saddle color. Those are the three like main colors that we need to sort of keep in mind when we're looking at all of these. Um, that stripe can break up or it can look kind of funky. It's not always a completely solid stripe, but uh, we're gonna kind of go with the standard today because we're talking more about the rules and not the exceptions. So Tesseras more than likely will have some checkers, at least most checkers, unless it, they are mixed with something else like Motley or Stripe um, or even Diffuse or something like that. So most Tesseras do have some checkered bellies. Tesseras also have what they call tessellations on the side, which is sort of a like back and forth pattern, uh, which you can see on the side of a tessera corn snake. Also, tesseras have the ability to be okati. They have the ability to have those really thick, dark borders. And so where you're going to find those borders is actually on either side of the stripe that goes down the back. And you may also see the borders a little bit in the tessellations on the sides. Now, a standard motley we know typically just has has the ground color colored spots going down the back and then the rest of its body is mostly saddle colored. Now Motley's typically cannot have an Okatee-esque look to them. They do not really have thick borders like ever. Some of them do have some visible borders but trying to get Okatee really into anything that's Motley is just not it's just it's just not gonna happen. Like um, there's a lot of people including myself who are working on getting thicker bordered Motley's but it just has not become like a thing yet. Now the reason that I bring Motley up is because Motley does have a selectively bred type known as Pinstripe. I talk talked about Motley's types in an older video. I will put that up here for you guys to go check out if you would like. So a pinstripe Motley also has the brown color stripe going down the back. And that is part of the reason why it is confused often with tesseras. And we're gonna get into combinations after this as well. A standard stripe, as many of you know, uh, is mostly the ground color. And then there's two saddle colored stripes that go all the way from the head all the way down to the tail. Some stripes actually have that sort of vanish as it goes toward the tail. That's called a vanishing stripe. I talked about vanishing stripe in another video also, uh, as well as all the other stripes types if you'd like to check that out. So now that we've kind of established the three like stripe-ish looking morphs that we're going to be talking about, we have obviously Tessera, we have Pinstripe Motley, and we have Regular Stripe. Um, and of course Motley doesn't always have to be a Pinstripe, but the reason we're talking about Pinstripe specifically is because it looks so much like Tessera. These are the things that we're going to start mixing, and I'm going to show you the differences uh, between the like mixed versions and the non-mixed versions so that you can kind of see the difference between something like say Tessera versus Tessera Motley versus Pinstripe Motley. Those are going to be the more confusing ones. Real quick before we talk about that, I want to mention that a Stripe Motley or one that is genetically Motley and Stripe is just going to look Motley. It's kind of a weird one. I will link another video above uh, kind of explaining that, but I'm not really going to get into it here. I just want to mention that um, just because we mix Motley and Stripe, that doesn't change the way it looks. So the first thing that I want to show is the Tessera Motley combination. Commonly, Tessera Motleys still have that same colored stripe going all the way down their back, but uh, any any resemblance to Okatee is probably going to be gone. You're not going to see that because of the Motley. 
there will be no belly checkers in a Tessera Motley combination. And usually the sides also form into long stripes that go down the body instead of the little weird vertical stripes that we see in a typical Tessera. Now, if you have a snake that has these like weird vertical stripes, but still doesn't have any belly checkers, it's still probably just a Tessera. Tesseras can have blank bellies, they just typically don't. So a Tessera Motley really does look a lot like a pinstripe Motley. There might be a little bit more visual like patterning on the sides, but the pattern again is going to go a long ways down the sides and not up and down. And also one of the main characteristics, one of the main differences between most pinstripes and most uh, Motley Tesseras is that most pinstripes, I, I keep saying most because this is not 100%, this is the rule though, not the exception, remember. Uh, most pinstripe Motleys have a break in their stripe right above the vent at the tail and most Tessera Motleys do not have that. Now some Tesseras, their stripe are, is gonna break up anyway. And so that might not really apply to some Tesseras because if your Tessera has already got a bunch of like broken spots down uh, its stripe, it's not really, you're not really gonna know for sure either way. But for the majority that do have that solid stripe, that stripe is going to not only continue on the tail, but there's not gonna be that break in the stripe over the vent area. Now let's talk about the combination between Tessera and Stripe. Tessera and Stripe combined looks almost exactly like Vanishing Stripe. That's why I mentioned Vanishing Stripe before. Now there's really no good way of telling the difference between Vanishing Stripe and Tessera Stripe. That's why I never ever ever would recommend that you take a Vanishing Stripe line to start working on a like Tessera Stripe project. I just do not do it. It's just gonna confuse you. It's gonna be crazy. A lot of times vanishing stripes will also have some of that saddle color still kind of visible as little dots near the tail uh, where the stripe would be. And that is not going to be present in a Tessera stripe. You're not gonna see those um, like stripe remnants down near the tail. There's not gonna be there. Let's just say you have a Tessera um, motley that's hat for stripe and you breed it into a stripe and you want to know which babies are tessera motleys and tessera stripes. The tessera motleys are going to look like pinstripe motleys. The tessera stripes are going to look like vanishing stripes. So like that there's always going to be like a more complicated thing than just this looks like this and this looks like this. Uh, but my recommendation to anyone who wants to get into tessera motley and tessera stripe and you want to start from scratch, even if you don't want to start from scratch, just make sure that whatever stripe sort of starts the Tessera Stripe project that you are using or buying from. Uh, just make sure that was not a vanishing stripe. And uh, if you're doing the motley, just make sure it was not a pinstripe motley. Um, that's going to be your best chance of telling the difference in the babies. And communicate with your breeder as well. If you, if you are a breeder or an aspiring breeder and you are wanting to purchase snakes from a project, so you want to purchase a Tessera Motley or a Tessera Stripe uh, for a project, but you want to make sure that you can tell the difference, uh, just kind of ask the breeder, you know, what the parents and grandparents looked like, what, like, what snakes originated to make this combination that you have, that's gonna be the best way to tell you what you are ultimately going to get out of the project that you're starting. And I kinda wanna mention, like if a breeder cannot give you that information or will not give you that information, maybe you probably shouldn't go with that breeder for that specific project. That doesn't mean that they're a bad person. That doesn't mean they're a bad breeder. That doesn't mean that their snakes are unhealthy. It just means that they don't have records very well or they don't keep records very well. And so uh, if you are very specific about how, you know, you want a certain project to go, um, just make sure that you know exactly what you're getting. I, I always say that to people who are wanting to breed whatever snakes you have, make sure you know exactly what you're getting. Hope that video helped. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in a future video soon.